Yes, it's Friday evening in Trinidad and Tobago. Another very special week as we await lots of decisions to come from the politicians. Obviously, the issues that are facing us today still surround crime in East Port of Spain, murders that are increasing, the issues of the licensing office, the issues of local government election, the issues of politicians who are getting up on the platform and now pontificating of a lot of things. And not least in the picture, the issues, of course, of the social fabric of the country decaying on a continuous basis. Let's turn our attention to some of the major things that occurred during the week. One of the things that came to my front door was the issue of the licensing office and the police harassing, so to speak, motorists with regards to them and the lights that are installed on their car. Many of them OEM. Yes, some of them have been installed as aftermarket, but OEM comes with it and it can also become as an aftermarket product. I can't understand why the politicians who bump their gums about wanting to make the system so much easier would know that there are many people who are now facing the courts relative to this particular issue and still not make the change to the legislation. Simple legislation, simple modification, no vast majority in the House required, one liner if you look sharp to change it. But we continue to pontificate along the lines that we know. And we leave the developed country who is the creator of the product as if though they have to come to us in Trinidad and Tobago and ask for permission to make the modification. I call that utter BS. But at the end of the day, what do the politicians really care about you, the small man outside there? He makes no difference in the lives of you or anyone because at the end of it all, it doesn't affect him. No police is stopping him. He's not going to be harassed by anyone and he isn't going to be charged. But with that said, we now have to wait and see whether you, the population, are going to be calling on them. Because sometime in the past, this matter went before a magistrate. And I am yet to get the definition, the decision, the feedback, the answers to whether it went pro or it went anti. Nobody knows. Not even me. And maybe it slipped me completely. We look at the situation also in the country of a local government election and the questions as to whether or not this local government election will come off on time. My prediction is that it will. I don't think that the prime minister is going to renege as complicated as it may seem. The other political parties are looking forward, especially the Green Party. They seem to have the most avalanche of people falling into their basket. But I warn you, don't let the glittering of the green become, <clears throat> as they would say, the guiding light for your decision. Let your decision be principled against the background of what is right and not who is right. For too long, you have been operating with who is right. Vote for this one or vote for that one. Just listen back to David Roder's song. Some of them saying this, some of them saying that. Some of them telling you that they will give you that. Some of them saying they will give you that. But in the end, what you're getting? Yes, that's correct. You're getting a stink rat. And you've got to understand that. But many of you are so, you know, subdued in, what should I call it? Under some kind of mirage of drugs. And I don't mean that in a bad way. <clears throat> I just mean that you, as if though you're under some kind of, you know, mesmerization. You can't see right from wrong. You're just following year in, year out doing the same thing and singing the same song. As if though you don't understand that your actions have not produced the reaction that is necessary in order to have a great society. But then again, I can't tell you what to do and you in the end will do what you want anyhow. But I say let better judgment be the guide. Look at that in the aspect of the East Port of Spain and the amount of killings that has taken place. Prime Minister goes down into that area. He says she is crying crocodile tears. I don't know. She's the only one will know. I would not believe that she's crying crocodile tears. I would believe that she has made, you know, a statement. Uh, she she's a she's an individual. She's a woman by any um, stretch of your imagination. She has feelings. 
and uh, maybe this has touched her in a particular manner. Um, those of you who were paying attention when Barack Obama was addressing the country at the time when he had his own difficulties, he also, tears came to his eyes. Was he fooling the people or did it really hurt him? So when some of you make these stupid statements that is crocodile tears, I mean, it seems as if though you're living inside the brain of the Prime Minister. It's unfair. It's un inhumane. It's unjust. Let's see what's going to happen. If you want to tell me that eSport of Spain has deteriorated and it's following in the footsteps of the Detroits, where a lot of things are not happening, I would say, yes, you're right. If you tell me that the property that the people are living in are devastated and falling apart, and everything is falling apart and rotting and nothing is happening, I'd say, maybe you're right. But then you have to ask the question, who got it there in the first place? And when you sit down and you understand the kind of rents that the people pay and the costs that they have to incur to fix small things that they are not prepared to do for themselves, paying such small or inconspicuous sums of money for utilizing a space, one wonders whether or not they are really serious about the domicile they live in. I've been down to that area and saw the water running from the water tanks at the top of the, of the building and asked the question what needed to be done and even suggested that, you know, let's get it fixed and was told, nah, don't worry about that, leave that so, let them come and fix it. You kind of wonder sometimes what is really going on and, and hey, to add insult to injury, have you ever seen how the garbage is in that place? Around the properties, how nasty and stink it is? I'm not discrediting anybody, but if you are living in an environment, five floors, 40 families, and you can't even come downstairs and weed the grass and pick up the rubbish from around you, how do you expect people to be thinking about you? This may not be a nice thing to say, but it's the truth. And it's high time somebody tell them. I don't know when the Prime Minister went into the area. She was vocal about how stink the place was. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't bring children up in that kind of environment and expect the children to come up in an environment understanding what, you know, cleansiness is all about. Mind you, I try my utmost best, and I'm sure they are also. Unfortunately, maybe it's not working to their best interest. But we'll have to wait now and see what's going to happen in East Port of Spain. Because everybody is crying, they want jobs, they want sustainable jobs. But I wonder how many of the people in that area have the qualifications, capacity, capability to hold in down a sustainable piece of employment. I've suggested already, let's rent some jets, some 747s, take all the people from Nelson, Duncan, um, all those areas in, in that domicile or in that perimeter, put them on a 747 and let's take them to Detroit and, and drop them in Chicago, carry them to some of the areas where they'll get to understand what really poverty is all about. They don't seem to understand. They think that everybody owes them something. They keep talking and saying, well, if you do this for me, yeah, 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 yeah. How many times that has happened? Give me 20. And when you get 20, you know, 121. When you get 21, you want 25. When you get 25, you want 40. When you get 40, you want 100. When you get 100, you want 2. You know, in the end, what happens? It's as if, though, you know, you are, uh, what should I call you? Find a name. Huh? What do you say? A kidnapper? Yes, yeah, like a kidnapper. Every time you get one thing, you want something else and something else and something else. Or a ransom holder. After all these years with all the opportunities that have been provided to improve yourselves, how many of you have gone forward and improved yourselves? Don't blame nobody for where you are today. And while you are legitimately entitled to get assistance, you're also legitimately entitled to make sure you take care of your responsibility. It would be interesting to do a proper research in that area and understand how many multi mothers it have with children with multi fathers, how many children they have after they reach to the point of three, and how many fathers they are for, and continue to do the full research. How many of them went to school and what part of school and where they are? How many of them went to jail? How many of them committed a crime? How many of them end up, ended up behind in the youth center? It's important. 
get the facts. <clears throat> when you get the facts, you can get down to the bottom line. You look at the situation on the other hand, another hefe in the tongue. Yes, I'm talking about Roger. He's the one that goes and bumps his gun, wants to have a march, doesn't follow the rules. And he has about 120 or 200 people for breaking the law with him. But then if he leaves a law on his own, he can do what the hell he wants to do in Trinidad and Tobago. You understand? He doesn't have to apply for permission. And then he could go and block up his face. So that nobody can recognize who he is. As if though he doesn't understand that those are rules that are not to be broken. But then he's the leader. Who the hell? What the hell? How the hell? It make no difference to him. He couldn't even care whether or not Sunday fell on a Friday. He'll go to church on a Tuesday thinking it's Sunday. But that's the kind of leadership we have. And that's the kind of leadership you people follow. But ask him to give an account of the financial status of the oil field workers trade union under his tenure after he took it over for weeks. Ask him. Let us see if he could publish for you the financial information. I guarantee you, he would fail. You see, because those guys are no different than any communist country. They only think about themselves. He doesn't care whether you, the employee, lose your job or get a better pay. All he is interested in is at the end of every week, union dues are played so that he could live the lifestyle he wants to live. They're all the same. Some of the things I've said today, I know you don't agree. <clears throat> I'm happy with your disagreement. But I would like you to qualify why you don't agree. In the end, it's not about me. I'm just one individual crying in the wilderness trying to get you to understand how to think. A lot of other things have happened for the week, but time doesn't permit. Let's hope that as we look forward, we can see a brighter tomorrow where every Trinbegonian will and can be happy, comfortable, and content. Until next week, remember, tune in to 104.7 More FM, The Situation Room, Mondays to Thursdays from 9 a.m. There are different operating hours. But more or less, once you tune in at 9, you're in the best place for talk radio with clean, precise, and accurate information being submitted to you, the citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, for you to consider. I say to you again, please understand, your role is to start appreciating how to think, not what to think. See you next week. Enjoy your weekend. And may the best boat win the great race, whoever that may be. Let's hope that it is safe and that everybody leaves and arrives the same way they came. I'm out of here. See you again next week. Bye.